Hello and welcome to the viewers of this video. This is the Orange Fan here bringing you another entry for the episode recap and thoughts category. This video will be dedicated to the Funimation dub of episode 36 of Dragon Ball Super. We begin this episode where we left off last time. Vegeta's in his Super Saiyan 1 form and he's starting to lose his stamina because of Megeta's heat attacks and the uh, enclosed arena because, in, just to catch people up to speed again, Vados created a barrier around the arena and Champa wanted to add in this rule where touching the barrier would be the same as arena out. And because of all that heat in the enclosed area, the oxygen levels are lower. So Vegeta's not quite, he's not able to breathe properly because of that combination. Goku also points out that because Vegeta's flying, he's at a higher elevation and oxygen levels are even lower at a higher elevation. So that's not a good combo. So he strongly advises Vegeta that he should take the fight to the ground, but ever the proud Saiyan prince he is, he blows off Goku's advice, and Bulma is not too happy with how stubborn and how prideful her husband is about this. Beerus accuses Champa of sabotaging the barrier, but Champa disproves this by saying how it is actually filtering oxygen in. Nonetheless, though, Beerus still suspects that his brother wanted to implement that barrier rule to give Otto Mageta a, an advantage. And as the fight's continuing on, though, it eventually reaches a point where it looks like Vegeta is hit with a ring out. However, the referee takes a very close look at it, and it turns out Vegeta's still in the fight. How is this, you might be wondering? Now, Vegeta's like on the tiptoe. It looks like one of his feet on its tiptoes is touching the arena or outside the arena. But according to the referee, he's actually touching rubble or debris from the arena that was blown off. So technically speaking, Vegeta is still in the ring. <laughs> Though the Saiyan Prince is not happy about the fact that a technicality saved him. But he calmly asks the referee again that the rule about the barrier is whoever touches it is treated as if they're being hit with a ring out, yes? And the referee confirms this. So Vegeta starts to unleash a very powerful yell because he's powering up intensely and... As we find out, his powering up was meant to destroy the barrier. So now he can actually breathe clearly, so his stamina's in better condition than it was before. Champa's angry at Vados for not making the barrier stronger, but Vados says that she would have made it stronger if Champa had been patient and didn't brag on her about being a perfectionist. <laughs> and in his effort to end this fight quickly, Vegeta delivers one of his signature attacks, the final flash, and he gives it his all against Megeta. When that, after that's finished, he rushes up to Megeta and he punches him too, all while calling him a piece of junk or something along those lines. And Megeta is hit with a rain out, and so Vegeta wins. Oh, and the arena was really destroyed even further. So, as a result, Vados is going to go repair the arena. When Vegeta arrives to the platform where the Universe 7 representatives are, he asks for a water bottle, and Whis conjures one up for him to drink from. He also comments that Vegeta might have gone a little too far, since he points out that Automageta is actually crying. Although in his robotic voice, he's just saying sob. <laughs> and Goku's surprised by this, although Whis reveals that the Metal Men species might have literal thick skin, but they have figurative thin skin. Apparently, they're very sensitive to insults, and Vegeta calling Megeta a piece of junk is what led to him losing the will to fight. 
Beerus is upset because he questions Whis. Why didn't he tell him this sooner? They could have finished this a lot sooner. But Goku, on the other hand, is happy they didn't know because they got to see a longer fight for it. And Goku catches Vegeta looking over at Hit. And he kind of... Vegeta doesn't say anything out loud, but Goku shares agreements with Vegeta, or Vegeta's apparent agreement that Hit's a strong guy, because keep in mind, they didn't see Hit's um, brief scuffle, I guess you could call it, with Frost, or kind of a one-sided scuffle, but you get what I mean. They didn't see Hit's confrontation with Frost, so they don't know about his powers, but they're good at sensing... uh, energy signatures and they can tell he's a strong one but before they can find out any more about hit it turns out that the universe six saiyan kaba is actually the next representative for the universe six team and the episode ends before that match can begin so yeah i really like this episode it was a pretty cool fight between vegeta and automageddon and definitely is something where Yeah, having to deal with lower oxygen levels, that definitely made things a little more intense, though Vegeta's idea to break the barrier was a good one, too. And, well, we got to learn a little bit more about the Metal Men species, not just their biology, but apparently it's a trait among the species, not just Megetta, that they're very sensitive to insults. Now, speaking of Megetta... As it was mentioned uh, er, back in the previous episode, the credits listed him as N.A., his voice artist is N.A., but a lot of people throughout the, um, throughout the internet, I've been checking out what other people have been thinking, they seem to be under the impression that it's a text-to-speech software that's uh, voicing Automageddon. And having a better listen at his voice... Yeah, I think that is the case. I'm pretty sure that's the case, too. And though that's caused a lot of debate in and of itself, some people are not happy about Megetta being played by a, I guess you could call it a synthetic voice, or... But other people don't mind, so where do I stand on it? I like it. I like the uh, text-to-speech voice that Megetta has. I mean, I think it fits with his character i mean because even the characters the the other characters themselves didn't really know if he was really a robot or not and it kind of works i think in that regard and yeah he's definitely a weird character so i think a weird voice like him talking with those onomatopoeias i think that fits for a weird character like him i don't think it's out of place it's not like they did anything like this for say frost or or Kaba or Hit. I mean, it was just Megetta. It was kind of just a... Um... Yeah, so I didn't personally have a problem with it. I think it's just fine for a character like him. And otherwise, I like Chris Sabat's performance as Vegeta here. Those yells, the final flash. That's definitely the Vegeta voice that I know and love. <laughs> And I think he did a really good job here, and I'm looking forward to seeing what he's going to do with the uh, the next episode, since, as it was revealed at the end, it's Kaba, the Universe 6 Saiyan, who's going to fight next. So that'll be interesting to see. Two Saiyans from twin universes will actually be fighting each other, and I'm looking forward to that, to seeing that, and... Not just hearing more of Chris Sabat as Vegeta, but I'm looking forward to more of Clifford Chapin as Kaba. So, there you have it. I thought this was a nice episode. I liked how Funimation uh, handled the cast here and the voice direction here. And looking forward to seeing how they're going to handle the next fight. And you can expect to hear my thoughts about that in good time. Take care and until next time.